Hi everyone, it's May. This is our last month of school. I encourage everybody, keep going. Make the most of it. Here in this month, it might be the best month of marine biology. This month, it's about marine mammals. In this month, we're going to learn about all the marine mammals. <laughs> That's why most of you signed up for this class. Yeah, we're going to learn about whales. Hopefully, there's going to be a whale that comes into Puget Sound and dies. If it dies, I'm going to go find that whale. I'll go to that whale. We'll uh, have class at that dead whale. We'll look inside the blowhole. It's one of my dreams. It's on my bucket list. I hope a great whale dies this year here near Seattle. And I hear about it in time to go out there. Every year, there's about 10 to 15 gray whales that come into the Puget Sound and they die. We'll learn why they do that a little bit later. We're going to learn about whales. We're going to learn about dolphins. We're going to learn about seals. We're going to learn about sea lions. Oh, oh, we should do the Norwal, the beluga. All those things are coming this month. So keep going. Keep learning. Get the most out of this month. All right. Uh, today, what we got, we got general mammal notes. Uh, general mammals. First of all, the way we got to start is we got to define a mammal. What makes a mammal a mammal? I'm a mammal. Your dog's a mammal. Your cat's a mammal. God, what makes mammals mammals? You're thinking about it, aren't you? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, a lot of you said that. You said they have hair. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a characteristic of most of them. But I'm losing a lot of hair. I'm going to be losing more hair. What if I lose all my hair? Do I stop being a mammal? Yeah, you're right. So it can't be that. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, you looked up there. Yeah, that's what it is. They nurse their young with mammary glands. That's what makes a mammal a mammal. The babies drink milk off of mom. I don't want to get in specifics of how it happens, but that's what the definition is. All right, so that's what makes mammals mammals. The babies drink milk from mom. Now, I'm a marine ma I'm a mammal. What makes marine mammals different? Well, the only thing different is they live out there in the ocean. So then I wanted to go into some challenges. What are some challenges marine mammals have? I'm covering it up with my head. You can't see the answers. Can you come up with a couple of them? Some challenges of living out there in the ocean. <laughs> if I take you on a boat and I throw you off the boat and there you are bobbing up and down the ocean, why does it suck? Yeah, you got one of them. One challenge it's that it's cold. It's cold in the ocean. Uh, another characteristic of marine mammals is, uh, of all mammals, is that they're warm-blooded. So if your blood is warm and your body temperature is warm, how can you live in that cold, 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 cold ocean? Well, the way that they're going to overcome this, as we're going to keep talking about today, is they're going to have, they're going to have a whole lot of blubber. And by having a whole lot of blubber, it's going to keep their body heat in. Maybe they don't have a whole lot of blubber, but what they have is they have a whole bunch of hair. A whole bunch of hair and all that fur, it keeps their body temperature in. Okay, so one challenge is, is that, uh, that it's cold. And how they overcome that challenge is that they're going to have a whole lot of blubber or a whole lot of fur. Another challenge. Need another challenge for marine mammals. You're right. How do they get their air? Uh, they're not fish. Fish have gills. What they have is they have a blowhole. It's like our mouth. They got to come up and they got to get a breath of air. And then they go down and they look for food or do whatever they want to do underneath the water. So another challenge is getting air. Okay, so we got, it's cold. How do you get air? What's another challenge? <clears throat> uh, well, we haven't gone through this, so we don't know. <sighs> but giving birth, having a baby. It's tough. And what is it like for a marine mammal? Well, I mean, the baby, it's going to come out. The baby's not going to have a whole lot of blubber. And it's going to come out there in the ocean. So how do they overcome that challenge? Huh. Well, a lot of them, that's what they're doing right now in the Puget Sound. A lot of them, the seals and sea lions, they're coming up on land. And on land, then they're having their baby. So it's not in the cold, cold water. Oh, there was an article in the newspaper just the other day about a group of elephant seals that are now coming into the Puget Sound and having their babies in the Puget Sound. 
All right. Um, that's kind of our general introductory notes to the mammals. I got a couple more. I got a uh, Ray Smartboard. Another challenge. Another characteristic. Well, let me do this. Uh, let me say a uh, human. Uh, uh, seal. Uh, dolphin. Uh, erm oil. Well, an elephant seal. <clears throat> All these are mammals. <sighs> Dive. Breath. <clears throat> Humans, how far can we dive down in the ocean? Uh, we could dive down for about 180 feet. And that's it. What happens at 180 feet? Good question. Oh, for some of you, you won't get down to 180 feet. If you have a small body frame, it might happen to you at 150 feet. Oh, if you got really strong bones, maybe some blubber, maybe you could go down to 185 feet. But for most of us, it's 180 feet. Down there, the pressure is so intense. You got 180 feet of water stacked on top of you. What starts to happen is your rib cage starts to break. Your bones break. They collapse in. They go on your lungs and your heart. It, you're going to die. For some of you, again, if you have a small body frame, it, happen, it might happen to you around 150 feet, maybe 140 feet. But that's it. That's about as far as we could die. How long can we hold our breath? Well, if you're here in the class, uh, I put my head in the tank of joy. I'd see how long I could hold my breath. It would be about two and a half minutes. We can hold our breath somewhere from between two and six minutes. If we work at it, if we train, we make it closer to that six minute mark. <laughs> Do it. Look up David Blaine on Oprah. David Blaine on Oprah a couple years ago uh, held his breath for 19 minutes. How do you do that? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Uh, that's as far as a human could dive down. What about a seal? A seal could go down to about 510 feet. Ah, they can hold their breath for about 20 minutes. <gasps> how can they do that? Well, I guess they got to practice. and Maybe that's why they could do it. But how can they go down to 100, uh, 510 feet? Why don't their bones just collapse? Time to think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Do you got the answer? God, you're right. They got a whole lot of blubber. And by having a whole lot of blubber, it acts as like a, a, a cushion. So the, the blubber could, could get compressed and the rib cage doesn't just snap. Oh, and that blubber, it keeps them warm in that cold water. That's why they could hold their breath for so, uh, go down so far deep. I was stumbling over my words there. Dolphins. I want to talk about dolphins. I can't wait for Dolphins Day. We may cry a little bit. Dolphins, they could dive down to 950 feet. How long can they hold their breath? Six minutes. <laughs> now, that's nothing compared to the erm whale. The erm whale. I don't want to say that word. The erm whale, how far can they dive down? They could go down to 6,500 feet. That's more than a mile. Oh my goodness. How long does it go that take to go down to 6,500 feet? The erm whale, it could go down and hold its breath for an hour and a half. 90 minutes. Man, I wonder what it eats down there. I can't wait for whale day. Next, the elephant seal. The elephant seal. Great videos about the elephant seal. The elephant seal, not as impressive as the urn whale as far as how far it could dive down. It can only go down 5,000 feet. How long can they hold their breath for? 120 minutes. Two hours. Oh, 
It's uh, general notes on Mammals Day. We're just trying to get our heads wrapped around marine mammals. Give us some stats, some, uh, some examples. What makes marine mammals marine mammals? All right. Now, a very important concept we got to talk about and understand are the bends. Have you heard about the bends? What is the bends? People die of the bends. We got to wrap our head around it. The bends. <clears throat> When you breathe in air, what is air? Well, air is made up of, uh, yeah, there's oxygen in there. There's carbon dioxide in there. There's a little carbon monoxide. And about 20% of the air is nitrogen. We breathe in nitrogen gas. Uh, nitrogen gas is not picked up by our, our red blood cells, our hemoglobin. <sighs> we breathe out nitrogen gas. When you take a breath of air and you start to dive down, as you dive down, pressure starts to increase. Pressure makes gases condense. Those that took chemistry, you know something about Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that under pressure, gases turn into liquid. If you take uh, the wife's class, what she's going to do is she's going to take a beaker of, uh, of air. She's going to put it on the table and then she's going to uh, turn on a pump. And a pump is going to increase the pressure inside that beaker. And then all of a sudden what you're going to see is you're going to see a liquid starts to form. She's demonstrating Boyle's Law. And the first gas to turn to liquid is nitrogen. As you dive down, you breathe in nitrogen gas. You dive down, under pressure, it turns to a liquid. Now you got liquid nitrogen in your lungs. What liquid nitrogen does, it goes right through your lungs and into your bloodstream. You get liquid nitrogen in your bloodstream. And all of a sudden, you start to feel a little loopy. They call it nitrogen intoxication. You feel drunk. If you're a diver, you get trained on what the bends are. You're supposed to always go diving down with the dive buddy. If you notice that your dive buddy's doing something kind of strange, they're spinning around in a circle. They go up to a fish, they take their mouth airpiece out, and they try to start talking to a fish. You know what's going on with them is they got liquid nitrogen in their blood and they're getting a little loopy. Now that it's in your blood, when you come back up to a surface, oh, there's less pressure there. So since there's less pressure, the liquid nitrogen is going to turn back into a gas. But now that it's a gas and it's in your blood vessels, there's no place for it to go. <gasps> you can't breathe it out of your mouth. So you get these air bubbles starting to form in your blood vessels. And these air bubbles want to go up. And as they want to go up, what happens is that their blood vessels could explode. Blood vessels in your head could explode. And you would die instantaneously. It's called the bends because where they start to accumulate are in your joints. And you bend over in the fetal position because it's so painful. That's where all the air bubbles are. So if you're a diver and if you get the bends and blood vessels in your head didn't explode, you get rushed to Harborview Hospital and there they put you in a pressure chamber. They increase the pressure back so that uh, nitrogen turns back to a liquid. And then they slowly uh, decrease the pressure. And it could, you could get rid of the, air, uh, the gas bubbles at a slow rate, but not a fast rate. Divers, what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to do safety stops. They come up like uh, 20 feet and then they stay there for five minutes. And then they come up another 20 feet and stay there for five minutes. And come up another 20 feet and stay there for five minutes. So they slowly release the gas bubbles. I got to pause the video and start back again.